previous meeting between the Prime Minister and the President of Indonesia as part of a, of a process. Well, why do I use the word process? Because between Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, there is a very intensive uh, uh, and varied level of communications, uh, whether it be, of course, at the highest level uh, at the, uh, between the President and Prime Minister, and of course, a few days, a few weeks ago, with the Yat Pertuan Agung, when he was in Indonesia, at the ministerial level, at the senior officials level, at the technical level. So we have a very, between our two countries, we have a very intensive uh, and multi-level, multi-pronged uh, process of consultations, as is in keeping with the, uh, with the fact that our two countries are neighbors. Uh, and, but the uh, annual leaders meeting is especially important because it provides a, an a forum whereby the prime minister and the president can uh, take stock of where we are in our bilateral relations to review developments since the last uh, annual would have been held and to provide strategic guidance uh, to the ministers as to what are the next uh, sets of priorities. Uh, and so from that perspective, the, uh, the forthcoming uh, uh, ninth annual consultation between the two leaders will naturally uh, encompass bilateral issues as well as regional and global issues. And when we talk of uh, bilateral, uh, there will be the, 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 the most uh, obvious points in terms of promotion of our uh, trade, promotion of our investment. Uh, these are the bread and butter of any uh, bilateral relations of the promotion of our trade and investment between the two countries. But uh, with uh, Malaysia, uh, it is not only about trade and investment and promotion of tourism, for example, but they are, given the nature of our very uh, close societies, we place great deal of privacy on the issue of people-to-people uh, -people, uh, relations, uh, as well, for example, uh, cooperation in the area of education. Uh, and the issue of uh, consular issues uh, between the two countries. We have large number of Indonesians living in Malaysia. Likewise, not a small number of Malaysians living in Indonesia. Uh, naturally, there are uh, consular issues to tackle. So um, uh, these are you know, the, the, the unique features, in a way, of our bilateral relations. It's not just the, uh, the uh, trade, investment, and tourism, but also the issues uh, uh, to do with people to the populations, education, consular issues, and not least uh, issues to do with uh, un, uh, unfinished or un, not yet concluded uh, delimitation of our, our borders, maritime boundaries, uh, etc. And it's, uh, it is, uh, this, I keep on going back to the word uh, uh, process. Over, this, the, over the past at least two years, there's been a huge uh, 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 intensification in the frequency of our uh, technical level and senior level meetings between the two sides uh, in, in, uh, in discussing on a number of unresolved uh, border issues, especially the maritime border issues. And at the technical level, without going into the specifics, at the, at the technical level, there are already a number of uh, emerging consensus, uh, and which, the, at the, from the technical level, they wish to bring to the attention of the leaders. But as you, you are aware, in most instances, when we when we proceed with border negotiation, there is uh, at least two kind of approach. Do we do things uh, step by step in the sense that those segments where consensus have been reached can be locked in and can be uh, confirmed or agreed before moving on to the next, uh, to the other unresolved uh, segments, or do we do things in one big uh, whole so that we no agreement until the whole thing is agreed, then we have one massive agreement incorporating many different elements. So there is still that kind of uh, uh, 
options that we have to, to, to go through. Uh, those where emerging consensus are, are already in appearing, already appearing, do we codify that? Do we confirm that? Or should we instead move in a more direct, uh, the other ones as well? Uh, but that's, that's more by way of approach. The important thing, I think, uh, is that we are trying to show to the rest of uh, Southeast Asia that uh, having border issues, unresolved uh, border segments, issues, does not have to become a problem. Uh, it is a fact of life. Uh, of course, we don't have a border issue with uh, Iceland or with uh, Rwanda, with Uganda, because we are not physically proximate. Uh, with Malaysia, with Singapore, with Thailand, with Vietnam, with Philippines, with Palau, with Timor Leste, we have border uh, issues uh, that needs to be addressed. But having this kind of uh, negotiations and, and meetings is a very important way of ensuring that these unresolved issues uh, remain uh, uh, are to be addressed through dialogue and negotiations, and not to become. Uh, problem in our bilateral relations. And the classic case, uh, the, the most recent illustration of how such a, such a, uh, approach can, can bring about uh, a mutually beneficial uh, uh, outcome is the agreement that we had reached, the MOU, we had reached with Malaysia on the report of uh, memorandum on um, uh, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, in, in um, there was an MOU between Indonesia and Malaysia signed uh, earlier this year between the two sides that, uh, without prejudice to the uh, still unresolved uh, maritime border issues, we agreed to follow certain. Uh, uh, practices where uh, there are fishermen uh, involved <coughs> inadvertently uh, not knowing what the status of the, yeah. of the area is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, so rather... In common guidelines, like MOU on common guidelines concerning... Oh. Yeah. This was signed concerning treatment of fishermen by maritime enforcement agencies of Indonesia and Malaysia. This was signed in January 2012. Now, this... MOU is not meant to resolve the actual maritime border uh, delineation, but and it is not prejudice. It's not prejudicial to the final outcome. But having this MOU between two friendly and and, and uh, uh, clo very close countries, very useful, is very uh, very useful because it helps sort of uh, provides a guideline if there were to be. Uh, cases of fishermen, uh, Malaysian coming into parts of Indonesia, parts of waters that we claim, uh, otherwise, or Indonesians going into parts of waters that Malaysia claims. This does not have to become a huge, uh, a huge dispute and incident that can that can be inimical to us. So we have this kind of regime now uh, of operation, and it has managed to to uh, to to, uh, to manage. The, the, the situation and, and again this is a very important example to the rest of our region we believe, of how an issue does not have to become a problem. But is there anything concrete and the long term solution for, for this moderation? Yes, I, I think so because but it takes years. I mean some of our, our negotiations with Vietnam, the maritime uh, delimitation and the continental shape shall took thirty years so thirty years. 30 years. Three years. So in the meantime, you take um, yeah. action like this to Yes, you know, I think so. I mean, I mean, border issues, uh, delimitation uh, issues, are by definition a very important and sensitive issues, and we must, you know, it must be based on agreed principles. What are what are the, uh, the basis on which the, the, the discussions are taking place? The law of the sea, international law, etc. And then it takes time, but what we need to ensure is that while this takes place, that the, uh, the conditions uh, uh, on the ground or at sea remain stable and peaceful. And so at, at the type of meeting when the Prime Minister and the President will, will uh, 
meet in a few days' time. The kind of uh, developments uh, in the negotiations that have taken place will be yeah, informed, will be shared to the two leaders. Uh, for the leaders to simply, for example, to say uh, press on, uh, continue on, or to provide any other guidance that they may that they may uh, choose to, to give. But the main point I wanted to emphasize is that there is a, a, an, undoubtedly uh, uh, there's been a very high intensification of the rate of, of the uh, of the number of meetings that our officials have had. Uh, on, on border issues. I know it sounds very administrative and bureaucratic, as if you say, well, what, what's the point of having meeting? But in, you know, on these kind of issues, the fact that meetings are taking place, if one of it itself is already very important, it allows us to understand better where the other side is coming from and to avoid miscalculation, to avoid misunderstanding. So, uh, has there been uh, at any point uh, any uh, deadline to I find my, my trade uh, having deadlines is not necessarily the most uh, conducive uh, uh, setting to encourage progress to be made. I mean, we have timeline. We have a sense of time, you know, where we have been, where we, how we, how quickly we wish to proceed. But we don't set artificial deadlines. But I, I am, you know, we are quite comfortable in the in the uh, political commitment of the Malaysia and Indonesia to be able to uh, uh, you know, fully address and resolve our maritime and border issues. There is, uh, you know, I mean, to me, it's almost as if there are two worlds in Malaysia. There is the perception and there is the reality. Uh, you know, the reality is actually there is a huge degree of mutual, um, in a huge degree of interaction. Uh, students, thousands uh, in that number, uh, Indonesian students in Malaysia, so many, probably, about 13,000. 9,000, but 13,000 it 13,000. Yeah. And then Malaysian students in Malaysia, 5, about 6,000, 6,000, 5,000, 6,000. Yeah. 6, uh, so there is. Um, a large number of uh, students uh, going back and forth, obviously a large number of uh, tourists, mm -hmm. uh, a large uh, workers going back and forth, Indonesian workers in Malaysia, Malaysian professionals in Indonesia, uh, a lot of cultural affinity, uh, cultural similarity. Uh, unfortunately, or the reality, the, the perception is, uh, you know, we only tend to, to the, our relations tend to get a lot of attention only when there are problems. Yeah, so that's, 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 I think to me, uh, from my, from my uh, vantage point, uh, you know, our, the, the nature of our relations, or our relations tend to become highlighted whenever, only whenever there are uh, difficulties or some challenge, whether it be border, whether it be consular issues, case of protection of nationals, uh, and often case actually nothing to do with the governments, it's uh, other issues. But these kind of events or these kind of incidents tend to shape the uh, opinion, popular opinion, of what our two countries are, and 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 this is where we have to be. We have to do better. Of course, these kind of issues and, and challenges needs to be addressed. Uh, they have to be prevented. They have to be uh, uh, identified quickly and they have to be, uh, protection must be given whenever incidents of this type occur. But uh, at the same time, we have to ask, put these things in context. Uh, not, not saying that they, they are not to be in denial. We, we must not deny, we must address them. But at the same time, we must ensure that the other dimensions of our bilateral relations that provide the balance, that provides the anchor to our bilateral relations are also brought to the fore. So that it's more, there is no like shocks uh, to the system, and and un undoubtedly some of the incidences uh, that have obtained public uh, public attention have been very serious ones. And I mean, serious from Indonesia's perspective, serious as well. I'm sure from your perspective, from Malaysia perspective, you know, like cases of uh, like the one particularly uh, unfortunate uh, situation when Indonesian uh, national was uh, was. Uh, fell victim 
to the, the uh, rape by by or the authority, by the policemen who are still not going through a uh, legal process. Of course, there is a legal process to be going through now. Uh, this kind of event incident is to be deployed wherever it takes place, right? I mean, whether in Indonesia, or whether it's in Malaysia, by whomever, because it is, it is, it is what it is. It's unacceptable. But uh, and 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 or cases of mistreatment of Indonesian uh, 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 by the Majikan. Individual case, nothing to do with government, nothing to do with the rest of Malaysia. But then it became a uh, you know, blow up. In the, actually, in the most recent case uh, the, of one uh, incident where this 16 year old girl was was uh, raped uh, by the Matikan, and, and the issue was brought to air, brought to the fore by the Malaysian police because the, uh, the Ibu Matikan, the wife of the, of the employee, reported her, this Indonesian 16 year old girl. To police for having uh, injury, but then the Malaysian police uh, was very suspicious. It seems to be a different case here, so evidence of physical abuse. But then they discovered actually something more sinister. So we are on the same page. We are governments are trying to you know we are working together. But this kind of uh, what to call it uh, very high profile uh, incidences can tend to define the relations and that's why our job is to prevent this type of incident happening. If something happened, quickly identify it and then make sure we have remedial course of action. Uh, you know, a, strong, a strong wish on the part of people to see justice uh, be implemented, uh, be, be, be heeded in a, in, a, in, a, in a timely way. So, you know, it's, it's a process sometimes, you know, but we ha I have never had a problem of communicating our 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 concern uh, and our expectation and hope that these things are properly looked after. You know, not not too many months ago, I came across a statement by one of the authority in Malaysia that uh, during this this period of time, so many uh, people had uh, had died, been shot by uh, Malaysian police uh, for cases. Uh, but from that number, in that same announcement was made that a large number were actually people from, from Indonesia. Now, of course, uh, a data of that type being presented just like that uh, caused all kind of furore, all kind of... Uh, so we need to be very, uh, you know, very uh, measured and very... and prevention. And we have now actually... Along this line, along this line, we have now the MOU, the amendment of the MOU on uh, on uh, domestic workers. workers. Yeah. Domestic workers that was uh, agreed, I think, earlier last year, last uh, year. end of last year. And last year. That was meant to be preventive in nature, uh, prevent issues. So it involves things like this implementation now for the past. Uh, the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. only about 95 people have actually uh, come across to Malaysia to work uh, using that framework proper. So those who are legally, who are sent, who are, who are in Malaysia, using, utilizing that more protective framework over the, these few months, uh, since the beginning of this year, it's only something like 95. And yet at the same time, we have uh, the issuance of so-called, what's called, um, journey, journey visa perform, perform, visa. perform something. Journey perform visa. Yeah, uh, of, uh, of a large number, uh, which in effect facilitate employment, uh, which do not use the same kind of uh, protective umbrella. Uh, it's, I guess it's quicker, but it's like setting, it's like almost like an accident waiting to happen. I mean, we have, we have this, uh, in other words, we have a form, we have a mechanism, but we are somehow we are not really uh, using it. Uh, that's why I just mentioned to my colleagues, let's look at why, where is the bottleneck? Is there a bottleneck or is there an issue uh, and what is the issue? So that we must ensure that uh, that we are, perfection can be the enemy of the good. If you are trying to have something and then in the end uh, we have, uh, you know, out, outside the system, it's not, not good. But, uh, so, Back to your original question, 
relations, government to government, extremely uh, close, very, very important. And I think relations are very strong and solid and, and sound. Even uh, including in people to people relations, I think the reality is one of very close interaction, very close engagement. However, there is a big footnote in the sense that we, we tend to allow certain issues to define uh, and tend to reinforce certain perceptions. So then we must address this by addressing the, those kind of problems and as well by pro putting context, highlighting the other things that is not. To, to, to make any suggestions about how in Malaysia internally uh, address issues, but the way we have been trying to work, not only with Malaysia, but with all countries, uh, whenever we have consular issues, uh, these three, three elements. One is prevention. So by now, we should have enough dossier of cases to be able to identify root causes. Uh, is it from our end, there are some root causes issue to do with uh, identification, IDs, etc. The Malaysian end, there may be some issues with agencies involved. So let's look at the, uh, there's a number of bullet points we can both do in uh, prevention, better than actually uh, confronting the problem in the program case in the first place. So uh, these type of measures are obviously national in Malaysia, national in Indonesia, but it would be useful for us to be able to be in synergy. And the MOU that we had amended on the uh, issue of informal domain of the domestic workers is meant to be of that type. It's meant to be prevention type. So I think there's a lot of uh, bullet points and a lot of uh, action plans that we can synergize with one another under the category of, 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 uh, of uh, prevention. Uh, but then after the prevention is early detection. Early detection means if notwithstanding our efforts to prevent things from happening, nonetheless incidences still occur, we must be able to quickly uh, find out about it as quickly as possible and therefore being able to quickly uh, make plan and that's my yeah. term, apa, advertisement that's, that suggests as if there is like a trafficking, a maids for sale, Indonesian maids for sale. And, and this was the, the action of someone, some entity that simply, apa, not even proper advertisement, it's like a flyer. But it creates all kind of, uh, you know, huge reactions both within Indonesia and in Malaysia as well, uh, with, your, with your NGOs, etc. But uh, this is the kind of thing. So the second category is protection, uh, um, early detection, and the third one is protection uh, itself. So that not, notwithstanding our prevention efforts, and after we detect certain things, we must, both of us, must be able to uh, carry out our protection responsibilities. We have access to uh, to the uh, outcome of the. Uh, Autopsy, as so we, we can carry out another autopsy here, the two police. So, this is simply communication so that we can, once there is a problem, uh, we are seen to be working uh, side by side. Uh, you know, so uh, a, lo a lot of, uh, not a lot, there are, there have been some high profile incidences that it's, it, it, it is what it is, it has happened. We are uh, deeply, uh, you know, very, very grateful when it happens and we're very, very upset by it, but we need to ensure that we prevent them and quickly detect them and ensure protection. Yes, uh, the EPG, actually when last time I met with Dato Anifa in Jogja for the joint uh, ministerial commission, when was it? GCBC, 27th of October. In October, mm -hmm. we already agreed to recommend to our leaders to relaunch the EPG, so I now it's a matter of uh, it being hopefully uh, endorsed by the leaders and then we will go into the mechanics of, of uh, the individuals who are the representatives etc. Yeah. On the MCN it has been it has been continuous uh, hope from our side but Malaysia has stated that they have the sufficient uh, but you know I'm not looking at the label uh, it's more the function uh, however whatever you want to call it uh, as long as we have it in terms of that early 
early notification arrangement or, or modalities uh, would be very useful because it is it's a win-win thing. I mean, now I have a an MCN of a sort informally with that one. If I, because whenever something happens, he contacted, he contacts me. So it's a it's a very and without a, uh, you know very informal and yet very direct, quick, quick uh, addressing of issue. Uh, the beauty of, of uh, modern day communication, being able to connect. <laughs> I wouldn't use the word effect. Uh, I would say simply say it is what it is. Uh, this is the kind of uh, architecture or the kind of environment uh, that our modern society is, you know, I mean, uh, Malaysia has its own internal uh, domestic setting and dynamics, Indonesia as well, uh, and, and that's, is the kind, those are the kind of uh, uh, realities or the kind of uh, environment within which we are cultivating our uh, relations. So, uh, I wouldn't say it affects negatively or positively, but it's, it, is, it is what it is. So what we have to be doing uh, is simply, our, our business or our task, in my view, is to simply project the comprehensiveness of our bilateral relations and the depth of our bilateral relations, not to be preoccupied with the tree, but look at the forest as a whole. So that with that kind of mindset, uh, even when there are challenges or difficulties, it can be put in a context. But uh, you know, I mean, Indonesia is a very vibrant, open uh, uh, setting, and uh, there are for every issue there are many different views, and it is what it is. So, but I don't, I don't see it as being a problem between uh, other countries' relations. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, like I was saying just now, the reality actually of Indonesia and Malaysia relations are very close one. Effects, whether it be business, governmental, and uh, this one is early notification. Uh, so it's simply informing one another of what has happened, and, and, and even the act of informing is already very uh, has a very uh, managing impact because it is already shown that look, we are informing you, notifying you. Beyond that, of course, there are many other possibilities. Uh, you know, we have what's called mutual legal assistance, uh, extradition treaties. Uh, to be, we have been. Uh, yeah, within ASEAN, there is. A, yeah, there is. A, there, within ASEAN framework, there is an ASEAN agreement on 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 uh, the mutual legal assistance, etc. So, actually, therefore, when you look at things, whether it be under the uh, prevention or detection or uh, for the, uh, I mean, the prevention, uh, prevention, detection, and protection. The three, the three clusters. Uh, there are many in the country of origin. So there is part of super visa integrasi kembali can can reintegrate to the society, can be closer to their family, humanitarian consideration. So it's something that I'm Indonesia is looking at with some countries, and I know that Malaysia is also looking at something that we can be looking uh, because it's a uh, seems to me quite mutually uh, beneficial, uh, providing uh, lessening the, uh, I mean, providing humanitarian consideration as well.